Hello guys and welcome to turn-based live or die plug and play game template. So in this template you can basically enter a stage turn by turn and you either live or die. So let me take you through how this works. So first of all we're going to click on host game here and then I'm going to host the game for two players. We then get a nice loading screen and we are then connected to the match. Then Rob on the left of me is now going to connect to this session because as you see we need two players at least to start this game. Here Rope is, so now the game match start, countdown starts. And once the countdown reaches zero, we see who the player is that is up next. So in this case, that is Rope. So he's gonna go. And Rope is on my PC and I'm on Rope's PC. <laughs> so Rope is now going to go over to the stage and he's going to choose one of the platforms that he wants to uh, try. So here we go, deciding your fate, live or die. Okay, so Rob lives to see another round. <laughs> now Rob gets teleported back, and then the next player is, so that's me. So currently, here I go. All right, so I get teleported backstage, and then I can make a decision. So which platform should we go, Gar? Let's do this one. And once I jump on the platform, I get eat interact. So here we go, the lever pulls. We hear drum roll. And I live. Okay. <laughs> oh, Rob. Rob, now we only have... Three platforms left. Okay, so now we have another uh, countdown here. And there Rob goes again. So now Rob comes there from behind the stage. And he's going to make his decision for which one. Which one will he choose? That one. Okay, so let's see. Rob pulled the lever. Live or die. He lives. Oh, now, now the pressure is on. Because now we only have two platforms left. So let's see who's going to win. Is it going to be me? Or is it going to be Rob? So now I have to walk up here, make myself a choice. I'm going to choose this one. Press E to interact. Deciding my fate. And I die, guys. So then I fall down the hatch and I rectal. Match over. Then I become a spectator and the match is over and the winner gets announced. And at that point, we reload the match. Now you can play this with any amount of players. So whether that is five players or 20 players, it works with any of that amount. And then we basically get restarted here in the match and we can play again. All right, guys, now let's go ahead and go into Unreal Engine and let's take a look at the required setup to make this work. Um, so basically, how do we set up this level? How do we get these actors in here? And then what is the logic here to make this all work? All right, guys, see you guys in Unreal. Hi, guys. Okay, so uh, back in Unreal Engine. Now let's take a look here at how we can actually set up levels for live or die. So the first thing that we're going to do is that inside of the live or die folder, we can find a maps folder. And inside of the maps folder, we see a gameplay level. So if we open that one up, then we go into the gameplay level and then we can see what the setup here is. So initially what we see here is that we have player starts. Uh, these are required to make the game work. So the way to get them is that you click here on the top left. You then go to basic and then here you see player starts. Now you aim these in a direction that you want the player to face. So for me, that's uh, this direction basically towards the stage. And then if you go over to details, then make sure that the player start tag is set to none, which it is by default. Then obviously we're going to need something like a stage where you're going to invite your players to. So in this case, this is our stage. And then on the stage, we see a couple of actors. So the first thing that we see is that we see behind the stage here that there is two player starts. So we see this player start on the left here behind the stage. And then we see this player start on the right here behind the stage. Uh, and what we see if we click on these player starts is that that player start tag is switched out to stage. Uh, and now we have some code inside of our game state that basically as soon as it is your turn to go on the stage, you will get teleported to one of those player starts that has this tag called stage. So wherever you want to have your stage players be spawned, make sure that on those player starts you put that stage tag essentially okay uh, then the next thing that we see is that we have these screens over here so where you can find them is if you go to your content drawer you can click on the live or die folder and then you go over to blueprints core gameplay actors and, and inside here you see blueprint screen so this one you can simply drag out and drag it into the world then you can rotate it so that it faces the player and then once you have this screen selected, you can basically go here to the right in the details panel and click on widget. And now we have two types of widgets. So we have one widget that basically, uh, it's you, you see it over here, it's called widget blueprint screen actor one. You can find it if you go into your content drawer to widgets, 
gameplay. And then over here we see Witcher Blueprint Screen Actor 1. And then we have another one called Witcher Blueprint Screen Actor 2. Now both of these widgets serve a different purpose. So Witcher Blueprint 1 inside of the game stage you can see exactly what type of text is being set there. But this over here basically shows the player that is currently playing. Um, it, it, it shows the countdown before the game starts and stuff like that. And then the screen that we see in the middle is intended to actually display the decision time for example that the player has. It shows whether or not the player has survived or died um, so that's how they are basically different so what we did here inside of this demo level is that we have two screens here on the left that have widget number one and you can see that if you select the screen click here on the widget component you can see that it displays widget blueprint screen actor one and then we have one screen here in the level that if you select it click on widget you can see that it displays widget blueprint screen actor two and then like i said if you then hit play then we see that those on the left, it basically has some of the basic stuff. It has the match flow information. And then the middle screen here will start to display the actual player stuff information. So that means player decision time and whether you live or die. Once we got that actor in place, then we see the following. We see that we have uh, here a staircase basically to a stage. And then in front of the stage, we see another blueprint here. Now this blueprint can be found here in the blueprints tab if we go to core gameplay and then go into actors then we see over here a blueprint actor spawner and this blueprint actor spawner can simply be dragged into the world and then in this scenario here i've rotated it 180 degrees so that it faces here the audience so you can drag this actor in here and what this actor does as the name also suggests it spawns an actor and the actor that it spawns is this blueprint hatch platform so that is this actor and this is essentially the actor that the player will jump on top of then the player will basically uh, pull on the lever here and then his fate will be decided now the way that this works is that one of those actors so one of those five platforms that we have here is the faulty platform and the other four are not faulty now every time that one of these platforms has been used it gets removed so the chances get slimmer and slimmer uh, the more platforms get removed. If all the platforms have been removed, then the platforms will simply be respawned. And game logic wise, we simply wait until we have a final player left, which is then our winner. So that is how this hatch actor here works. It basically uh, is either a faulty one or not. And this actor over here is responsible for actually spawning these hatch actors. So as you see, if I hit play, you see that these hatch actors, five of them, currently here inside of the level okay so that basically concludes the actors here that we require in order to make this game mode work uh, and then let's look at how we can modify the game mode a bit so if we go back here inside of the blueprints folder we go to core then inside of core we go to gameplay in gameplay we go to core and then over here we go to blueprint game state gameplay and if we close this tab here and go to the event graph then here on the bottom left we see some variables that are our game settings so we can change these variables variables in order to change the game settings so the first one that we can change is the one that we see here on the screen it's the game start countdown so initially how this works is when at least two players are in the game the game start countdown goes uh, and if you select this variable you can also find it here under match flow game start countdown then this is the amount of seconds it takes before the game actually starts so this one here you can set it to 10 seconds or to for instance five seconds if you want the game to start a bit faster then what we have is that if the player gets teleported to the stage we have decision time and in this decision time the player has to select one of the platforms which will either make him live or die uh, and if the player has not decided within this time frame so the decision time countdown frame uh, if he hasn't properly decided within that time frame then the player will always result into being eliminated so into dying basically and to change this decision time so let's say you want to have the player to have more decision time then over here on the left we see game settings and then we here see here initial decision time countdown and over here you can change this variable to any decision time countdown number that you'd like then we also see that uh, we have over here an upcoming player countdown and then what this is for is if somebody just had a turn then we are going to select the next player also known as our upcoming player and there's a little bit of an intermission period before we actually go directly to the next player and that intermission period is this upcoming player countdown time now you can also change this upcoming player countdown time over here on the left so here we see initial upcoming player countdown 
down. And this initial value, you can also switch over here. So by default, we set it to five seconds, but you can also set this one, for instance, to 10 seconds, which means there's 10 seconds in between every player's turn as intermission time. So that covers most of the basics of how you can actually set up the game mode and how you can then also change some game mode settings to your preferences. Then let's talk about how you could add additional levels to this template. So basically we give you this demo level by default, but of course you can have different layouts for these levels. So the way to do that is that you go into your content drawer and then over here we see the maps folder and in the maps folder, like I said, we see the gameplay level. Now what you could do is you can right click and duplicate this level and give it a different name. So call it gameplay level two, for instance, or you can go in the top left here and click on new level and create yourself a new level from scratch. And then of course, make sure to put these gameplay actors in there as I just explained. And also make sure to click here on the world settings category. If you don't have that tab, you can go over to windows and click on world settings over here. And then inside of the world settings tab, you have to define your game mode and your game mode contains all of your gameplay classes. And these basically define all of your gameplay logic. So for the purpose of this video, I'm simply going to duplicate this level. So let me right click this and duplicate it. And then let's call it gameplay two underscore level. So this is my gameplay two underscore level. Let's save it. All right. So here we have my second level. Now over here, I can of course change the layout and everything, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna leave it as is and simply show you guys how you can then host this level. So if we go to the content drawer, we can go over to widgets. We can then go over to the main menu widgets and open the widget blueprint main menu. And over here in the bottom left, we can click on the widget switcher, click on host game, and then we see the host game panel here. Here we have a map switcher. So if we select that, then we can see on the right here some options. And right now we ha only have one map in here. So the first thing we're gonna do is click on the plus here and we're gonna type map two. So now we can toggle this switcher here from map one to map two. Then if we go over into the graph, then we see some code here. So if you zoom out, we see the host game category. And then basically here we see that on the selected map, we switch to a level that we want to open. So if we select this switch on string and add the plus here, then here on the bottom left, you can then type map two. And then what we do is that we copy paste this open level node and plug this into map two. And then here, type your level name for map two. So for me, that's gameplay two underscore level. Now we are able to select our level in the main menu for hosting. All right, then when we have finished that, then what we do is that we go over into the blueprints category here, go to core. Then we go into the gameplay folder. Inside of the gameplay folder, we go over to core, blueprint, game mode, gameplay. And now we are in the game mode blueprint here. Then over here, we see on the left, a level travel function. If we double click that to open it up, then here we have some logic for when the match ends that we want to reload the level. But if we have two levels, we can also change the logic so that we can travel to another level. So the way to do that is that the switch on string here, we can open this one up as well. Copy paste our previous level name and then change it to gameplay two underscore level. Now we get an additional pin. And then the logic here is if we are currently inside of let's say gameplay one underscore level, then we want to travel to gameplay two underscore level. So if we are in gameplay level one, then we want to travel to gameplay level two. And if we are in gameplay level two, then we want to travel to gameplay level, which is our gameplay level one. Okay, so now when the match ends, we actually have some correct logic here for changing the level and then server traveling all of the players to that level. All right, guys, that covers everything for creating a new level and being able to host that level and properly level traveling to your new level when the match ends. Then let's look at one final thing, which is how we can switch out the player character. So inside of live or die, we have an assets folder and inside the assets folder, we have a demo folder. And over there, we have a third person template character. That is the character that we give you by default in this game mode. The way to switch that character out is that first of all, what I recommend doing is that inside of this assets folder, you can create a folder, something like uh, call it character or something like that. And inside of that folder, you can then import all of your character assets. Then what we do is that we go over to the blueprints folder, go into core gameplay player and over here we can find the blueprint for the character if we open this one up we then see all of the character logic so what we do in the kit here is that when the so what we <laughs>
So what we do in the kit here is that when the character spawns, uh, he or she either becomes a male or a female, and we set a character color. So the first thing we want to do if we want to have our own characters in here is that we want to remove this logic since it's only related to this example character. So you can simply get that away. And then what you also want to do is that the corresponding variables you also want to remove and the corresponding wrap notifies for changing the appearance and the color ID of this demo character. You can remove these functions here as well. And then the way to switch out this character with your own character is that once you're in the viewport, you can simply go ahead and select the mesh. Once you have the mesh selected, you can then over here select your own custom skeletal mesh. So over here, you would then see the skeletal mesh that you imported. And then here over in animation class in this drop down, you can then assign the animation blueprint for your custom character. And then the last thing that we have to take into account is that we have a player name showing up above the character's head. So you want to uh, basically put this player name somewhere above the player where it doesn't collide with the player. Uh, and of course, something that I recommend doing is clicking on the capsule and then making sure that the height of the capsule and the width of the capsule make sense for your character. All right, guys, that's all of the basic setup that you need to know for this product. I hope you guys enjoy this template and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye, guys. Have a good day.